Hi, everyone. I am Nicole Proctor. I'm Program Director um, at the Portland Recovery Community Center. Um, if you're not familiar with us, I'm actually going to tell you a little bit about what we do in my presentation. Um, I am a woman in long-term recovery from opioid use disorder um, and actually polysubstance use disorder. Um, I just celebrated six years of recovery, and um, I've been at the center here for five years. And working with our statewide initiatives. So really like public education, um, trainings and recovery coach um, certification and development across the state. So um, very happy to be here and to have been asked to, um, to present. I'm just gonna bring up my slides real quick and bear with me for just a second. It's not going. There we go. All right. And um, I do want to welcome everybody. I know that Lisa had said that it is, it is interactive um, and that you're welcome to come off mute and ask questions. I just wanted to reiterate that um, for my presentation as well, um, because as I'm sharing slides, I really can't see you guys. <laughs> so if you want to come off mute and just say, hey, I have a quick question, um, you're more than welcome to do that um, or wait until the end. Um, I'm going to go pretty quick so that there's time for questions. I think that the slides have already been sent out to everybody. Um, so again, I'm Nicole Proctor. And um, so Portland Recovery Community Center, uh, we're located here in Portland. Um, we have been open for about 12 years. Um, and we are considered a recovery community organization. Um, what that is, is an independent nonprofit um, that is led by people in recovery for people in recovery. So it's really a peer-based um, model and organization. And, um, and we really pride ourselves on, on being peer-led um, and here for the peers. So right now we have about, I think it's 18 centers in Maine, um, and they're all independent. Um, they've all opened in the last five years, which is all except for two of us, um, opened in the last five years. So our state has really come a long way in providing um, some financial support to um, provide uh, recovery resources to people in our state. Um, so what we do, we really do three things at these centers. Um, first and foremost is peer-based services. So everything from recovery coaching to social events, we offer uh, telephone recovery support, which is a service where we have um, uh, volunteers that call members of the community in recovery and check in with them. It might be daily, it might be weekly, it might be monthly, however often they want to receive a call. Um, and it's really great for people who live, um, let's say in like a rural area or have no transportation to get to a center and, and um, get that community support at a center. So we provide it by phone for that. Um, and of course, mutual aid meetings, that can be anything from 12 step meetings to, um, wellness activities like yoga and Reiki, um, to art groups, um, movie nights, those kinds of things. We also do recovery uh, focused advocacy and education and outreach, so um, stuff like this. So um, in 2007, peer recovery support services were recognized as an evidence-based practice model for co-occurring disorders. And so SAMHSA uh, defines peer recovery support as a non-clinical peer-based activity that engages, educates, and supports individuals so that the individual okay. can make life changes that are necessary to um, recover really from their head. substance use okay. disorders. Um, um, and the really great thing about peer uh, recovery supports is that it can be offered to, um, to somebody at any um, any point along the continuum of care. So mm -hmm. it may be before they've actually put down oh, substances um, all the way through, you know, lasting recovery of, you know, 10 years. So 20 years, 30 years, whatever it might be. Um, so these support services can and should be offered to really anybody that's <laughs> looking for um, support with uh, substance use disorders. And so everything that we offer at centers around the state is free. And that is 
in and of itself, just a huge benefit to, to the folks that uh, you are working with. Um, you don't need to have insurance. You don't need to pay for services. Uh, everything is free from our social events to uh, uh, support groups, of course, and free recovery coaching. You know, they can just come into a center and say, hey, um, you know, I just want a cup of coffee and hang out. Or, you know, I'd really like to sign up for recovery coaching. So everything is free. And um, a lot of times, you know, somebody, somebody will say, well, what do you do? Um, sometimes it's easier to, to explain what we don't do <laughs> to understand what we do do. But I'm going to start with what we do do. Um, so first and foremost, we support recovery potential in everyone and anyone. There's, you know, no point um, that you can't come back from in active addiction. And sometimes that is hard to believe for us as people in, um, in active addiction, when we're in active addiction. Um, we offer support services and we're able to really bridge the gap between treatment and then ongoing sustained recovery. Um, because let's face it, not everybody has the resources to go to treatment um, and we're here for everyone. Um, we do offer multiple pathways of recovery. And what that means is if you're working with, um, with a mom or a family that says, you know, we're not into like that 12 step stuff. That's not for us. Like, that's fine. We, you don't have to be, we offer over 50 different activities and groups and different pathways of recovery a week. Um, and the, there's something for everybody here. So what we don't do um, is provide any clinical assessments, treatments, or services. Um, there's no counseling offered um, at our centers, and um, we never promote one recovery pathway. So we're never going to tell somebody like, hey, you have to go to this meeting, you have to try this. We're gonna say, hey, have you ever tried this? Maybe this, you know, and just kind of open their eyes to different possibilities that might, um, that might be helpful. Uh, and then real quick, just a few of the benefits of um, having these recovery community organizations in our state is that it really helps to remove barriers for, um, for recovery. Um, we are able to show people that they can have fun in recovery and help build social networks again that are safe and, um, and real. You know, it's sometimes hard to, to form those relationships when you put down substances so it's a community of people that are working towards the same things. Um, and, and that includes the family members as well as people with um, SUD. Um, yeah, and so that's pretty much covers those benefits. So when you're working with moms and families, um, again, just a reminder, like we're not clinical, so we're not gonna be, um, uh, giving, you know, clinical advice here, <laughs> but as a peer and a person in recovery and somebody, and also a mom who um, could have benefited from this program when my son was born 14 years ago, um, there's a few things I think that would have been helpful to know, and that would help to identify um, some of the like healthy resources I had available to me, to me in my life and some of the unhealthy um, things that um, I needed to look out for. Um, and so to really help improve maybe some of the outcomes of the families that you're working with, um, first and foremost, you know, in early recovery, I think we all need to be reminded that anything can be a trigger. People, places, things, everything that you encounter <laughs> can be a trigger, whether that's, you know, your immediate family members, um, you know, the restaurant down the street that you pick up dinner from, like anything can be a trigger. Um, and so it's really helpful when working with families and the moms in particular um, is to be aware of, um, be aware of the, the phases of what's called reoccurrence of use, um, which used to be called uh, relapse. Sorry, <laughs> my mind just went blank. So there's the emotional, um, the emotional relapse, physical relapse, and oh my god, I just, I like I said, I just went blank. Kim, you're on the, you're on the call. What's the other one? 
Is it when you pick up the substance? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the actual reoccurrence. Oh my God. I haven't had my lunch yet and I'm really hungry. So bear with me. Um, so yes, the three phases of recurrence. And so if you're aware that it starts with the mental and emotional, um, the thoughts before you actually are picking up. So if you can identify those three um, phases of actually picking up, um, it's really helpful. The um, If there is a reoccurrence or to prevent a reoccurrence, um, it's really helpful for um, people with SUD to identify their personal triggers. So like for me, I didn't know that walking into Dunkin' Donuts, the smell of Dunkin' Donuts facilities was a trigger for me. And I learned that after I was already in recovery. That might have been helpful to, <laughs> to actually realize and know much sooner. Um, remembering the reasons that they are um, putting down substances and, and that they're working towards um, recovery. Um, another helpful way to prevent um, reoccurrence is, uh, of course, asking for help, but that's all, uh, often really, really hard. So making a plan, like when you start to have that um, emotional um, triggers or emotional relapse, um, make, having a plan, like who are you going to reach out to? Who is it going to be easiest to ask for help from? Um, and then helping them to set up the, their support systems. And that can look like putting them in contact with a center, um, like Portland Recovery Community Center or one of the other centers around the state, depending where you're located, um, and having them sign up for recovery coaching. Um, setting up that, that system, um, they can start looking at their recovery capital. What do they have going for their recovery? Um, and what can they build on um, to to have um, stronger recovery. Um, they'll, they can also start working with their recovery coach um, towards a recovery plan, planning and setting goals. Um, and it's goals that they want to achieve, not goals that anybody is telling them that they need to achieve. So that can look very different for everybody. Um, so in the slides that you received by email, um, you'll see the, the map of all of the centers. Um, this is actually, and our last version, we're waiting for a new version. It's kind of out of date as far as West Cassett has moved. Um, but if you visited our um, website, you can always um, access the most recent map. And then just a few resources um, where you can access the statewide map here, portlandrecovery.org, um, the SAMHSA.gov, and 211 Maine um, are great websites for more information. And then specific to, um, to um, Maine, as well as the knowyouroptions.me, which is the options initiative um, started by um, the governor's office. And that provides all, not all, but a lot of providers that might not be on 211 Maine if they're um, not a nonprofit. 211 Maine often has um, the nonprofit resources. Um, so, that is all I've got <laughs> for um, peer-based services, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys might have.